Hello! Today I'm going to be answering some questions that my lovely friend Rachel from the Flower That Blooms blog has asked me. Uh, she's a student photographer like myself and I think I've just got a little bit more experience so she had a couple of questions for me and I thought it would be more useful to talk about it rather than write about it so I can fully explain what I mean um, she's asked me six questions that hopefully I know the answers to bear in mind I'm not a professional I am a student I study photography at the um, at the University of Sunderland I live in Hull, I'm currently in Hull now uh, I don't commute, I do live in Sunderland the majority of the year but the um, the whole university course wasn't what I was looking for so I moved um, but I've been selling myself as a photographer I don't know I'm doing this because I actually am one um, it's a very difficult thing to get into the mindset of being that is what I am not what I'm trying to be because it is what I am and it is what you are if you are taking photos you are a photographer ta da but yeah the first question she asked me was when did you start charging for shoots and I first started charging when I thought I was ready and when I thought my photographs were worth what I was asking for and I think the first ever shoot that I did that I charged money for was a charity event that one of my friends asked me to photograph um, obviously I didn't ask for a lot of money because it was for a charity and my friend had organised it um, but it was on a day where I would have been doing something else and I had that epiphany where it was like right this is what I want to do I need to start getting that self-employed mindset going now my work is worth this much to me therefore it should be worth this much to you so you can pay me that much money but the first big job that I charged a, like more than 50 quid for was a wedding um, I really 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 love photographing weddings as you can tell if you watch my last vlog um, it's very like self fulfilling to hear that somebody wants you to take these photographs that they're going to keep forever their kids are going to keep forever, their grandkids are going to keep forever there'll be those mantelpiece pictures that everybody that comes into the house will look at and hopefully admire so that's where I first started charging because I realised there's a lot of money in it um, and I probably wouldn't have started charging so early if I hadn't been approached to do a wedding I did a lot of practice photo shoots before I started charging I gained a lot of experience uh, well I think it's a lot of experience anyway before I started asking for money like my friends uh, Chloe and Chris three years ago um, Chloe wanted some bump photos doing like maternity pictures and I was still at college so we used the college studio and I didn't charge them any money for it because I'd never done one before um, but now I've done a couple so I now charge for that March 2014 was when I did my first wedding ever and I did that on my own I wasn't second shooting for anybody I didn't have anyone else with me just in case anything happened I was full on balls out put myself there and I was happy with how it went so I do more and the bride and groom were happy with how the pictures turned out so I think if you're thinking about starting to charge for your expertise and for your time and for your skills and for your talent and your education 
because that is everything you need to consider. You need to make sure that you are comfortable enough to ask people, either people that you do know or people that you don't know, for their money. Because you're going to have to sell yourself. Nobody wants to part with their money. Everyone's a tight ass. Uh, the second question that uh, Rachel asked me was, how did you start out finding clients? Luckily for me, my mother is one of my biggest fans. She always tells her friend that she's got this wonderful daughter student photographer that does all these different things, oh she does weddings, oh she does baby portraits, oh she'll do your family pictures, oh she'll take pictures of your horse, that kind of thing. And I ended up getting my first wedding through my mum because she works with the girl that was the maid of honour and I hadn't met this couple before which was terrifying and in 2014 I was 19. Yeah, I photographed my first wedding when I was 19 on my own. Um, it was beautiful and I still look back at the pictures now and I think they're great. Um, obviously I can see where I've improved over the past three years but I wouldn't be disappointed in showing new clients those pictures but obviously you're not always going to have other people doing your networking for you um, a lot of my clients have been friends because you know that's how everyone starts out isn't it you, just, you don't automatically just go and find these really high paying clients that are willing to throw all of their money at you. I advertise on Gumtree. I promote myself a lot on Facebook. The way that I've found helps getting my Facebook page out there is post your wedding albums or your party albums or your fashion shirt albums, whatever you've been photographing on Facebook and get whoever you photographed to tag themselves in it, to tag their friends in it, because that way you can invite loads of people to like your page, then it'll come up on other people's timelines being like, oh, so-and-so has liked this person's photography page, let's go have a look, see what's on there. It is a lot of networking, talking to people, you have to be very confident in yourself, um, you have to be very well organised, you need to know your availability, you basically just need to show them why you should be hired instead of somebody else. But yeah, I have a little idea, like a character in my head of who I am when I have my camera in my hand and when I am taking those pictures for you. I am professional Meg, I am wedding photographer Meg, I am baby portrait Meg. I think of myself in a different way and I think I present myself in a different way and I think people receive me in a different way. My selling point is that I am the wallflower photographer so I'm not going to stand there and boss you and your family around, I'm not going to tell your guests where to go, I'm not going to interrupt parts of your wedding, that could be really important. I'm going to stand there and I'm going to follow you around like a little weirdo, like your shadow, I'll be stuck to you like your shadow on your wedding day, taking those pictures that some other photographers miss and I mean the real important moments that your friends aren't going to have the camera phones out for which I'll get back to another point because that drives me insane and I'll just get it and it'll be real and you won't know that I've taken that picture until you get your wedding photos back until you get your family photos back until you get whatever you've asked me to do photos back and you see it and you go Wow. The last wedding I photographed was my wonderful friends Charlotte and Lee. Uh, they got married at Fruit in Hull down Humber Street. And when I was taking Charlotte's getting ready pictures, obviously I was just sat in the room with them, um, with her and her bridesmaids and her mum. And I wasn't getting them to do anything. I was just kind of sitting there and watching. And I got the most beautiful portraits of Charlotte when she was stood looking out of the window. And she saw them and was like, I've never seen myself look like that before. And if you can show somebody a photograph where they genuinely see themselves as beautiful, that is the best feeling. 
Oh, oh, I've gone off track. I don't even know what my question was anymore. Ah, oh, finding clients, that's totally, I'm just keep going back to weddings, I'm in wedding mode. Um, Gumtree, Facebook, business cards, flyers. Photographers are a luxury that everybody is going to keep paying for because people always get married, people always have babies, people always have parties, people always put on events. There is always going to be something there. It is a risky career um, because it is a saturated industry and I hate saying it but it is true. There are a lot of people that are budding photographers and want to make it into a career and the majority of these people are just wanting to go freelance they're not wanting to go into a specific niche of band photography, gig photography, fashion photography, portrait photography, wedding photography everyone wants to do all of it I want to do all of it because what's the point in just doing one when you can do all of it so if you become well rounded at all of it and someone hires you to do like a party for them and you do a good job they're like oh do you do weddings because so and so is getting married or I'm getting married and you can just go yeah I do and you get more jobs from the same clients I am proper waffling this is going to have no structure to it whatsoever but the third question that Rachel asked me was how do you come up with your pricing lists it was the hardest thing I've ever done because everyone else is going to have an opinion and obviously I want to talk to other people about it because I want to make sure that I'm being reasonable yeah everyone does market research before finding out how to how much to charge for something like makeup brands will do that, hairdressers will do that, manufacturers will do that um, but the thing that I struggled with was I thought I was worth more than my family did um, I got asked to photograph a wedding for a family friend uh, in 2015 and I was still coming up with my pricing lists I hadn't done many weddings before then so I wasn't set on how much I charge I am now and I do have pricing lists for everything now but then I didn't and I was thinking oh well I'll charge this much per hour for the wedding itself and then editing time included but obviously you can only kind of guess how long that's going to take I do a set base of £20 an hour um, which is why it costs more if you hire me to do your getting ready pictures until your first dance pictures because I'm going to be there for about 12 hours that's a really long time it's going to cost you a lot of money but even that goes up to like, what, £240, that's nothing. So you've got to take into consideration your equipment, your insurance, your travel costs, your travel time. So travel time also goes into the £20 an hour category. So the further I'm travelling, the more money it's going to cost for me to get there. If you want the photo booth or not, because that was an extra £50, it's now going to be an extra £100 because... The setup isn't impressive. I don't have an iPad and a fancy booth that you go and sit in. I have a pop up backdrop and a tripod and some props. But it's so inconvenient for me that if you want it, you're going to have to pay a lot more money for it because for me, it's not worth it I'm trying to lug it all around for just an extra 50 quid. And that may sound entitled or whatever the fuck you think, but it isn't. I know what I'm worth and it's taken me a long time to get to know what I'm worth. So Rachel, my dear darling, please don't undersell yourself, please do not undercharge because you will regret it. The wedding I just did was incredible, it was at this beautiful hall, they got married in this gorgeous church um, where the bride was getting uh, ready in the morning, beautiful house, it was a mum's house. The whole thing was, I was lucky with it. I, I knew the photos were going to turn out good um, but they turned out so much better than I thought and the day was very long and I'd taken two assistants with me who 
both through the same uni course as me. One's just graduated and one's on the same year as me. And they were both saying to me, I can't believe you only charged £500. I can't believe it. You've gone above and beyond. You've done all of this, you've done all of that. You've got all your camera straps around you like Lara Croft. You've had all your photo booth stuff going up. You've been running around like a madman. You need to be charging more than that. And I do. So my prices are going up. But bear in mind, you can't just do that from the off. You can't just start photographing weddings and being like, ah, hundreds of pounds, please. If you've never done one before, if your equipment is underwhelming, it doesn't have to be impressive, but you can't turn up with a point and shoot camera. Have a DSLR, know how to use it, know which lenses work for which situations, know which settings to use for which situations. You need to know how to use your camera before you charge money for it. Do that. Because there are girls, and boys for that matter, on my uni course who still shoot in JPEG. S small files, small file, JPEGs. Why? Why would you do that? Your camera is capable of shooting in RAW. Change your fucking settings. An autofocus. No. No. You should know how to focus a camera. Just because your camera can do it doesn't mean it should. Moving on to question number four. Um, how do I get paid? I have started doing contracts. Uh, very well covered everything contracts. I have not left any stone unturned. I cannot get sued for anything that goes wrong. Um, but in these contracts that I write and that get signed by both myself and whoever my client is, I write down exactly how I want to get paid and that is always deposit via PayPal because I can send invoices on PayPal. It's online, it's the easiest thing, you don't have to plan to meet up with anybody. But for full payment of what I'm photographing, it says in my contract that the full payment must be paid either the day before or the day of the event because if I don't get the money you're not going to get your pictures and I don't want to waste my time editing all of these pictures if you're not planning on paying me but I accept cash I accept PayPal payments I accept bank transfer online payments uh, not checks mainly because I don't understand how they work but no, I wouldn't accept a check so I don't, I don't advise you to offer that as a kind of payment that you would take. Does anyone even still write checks for things? Then there's the whole thing about having to register as being self-employed and then having to pay taxes, but I don't make enough money to do that. But research it before being worried about that kind of thing. Speak to somebody in your bank about it. Speak to someone who is self-employed. Any tips on becoming more confident with your work and gaining confidence with clients? Now, listen to me. The only way you will become more confident is with more practice, is with more experience. If you are concerned about working with clients, go get more. Because it's with different clients, you need to act in different ways. Like with some of my clients, I can happily swear away and whinge about stuff and bitch about stuff and basically just be myself, my whingy, bitchy self. But with other clients, you do have to be 100% professional. You need to speak in a very professional manner, in a very polite manner. You need to present yourself very well. You need to make sure you're clean. You need to make sure that you don't have chip nail polish because for some reason that does often lead to a bad impression. If your hair's not clean, if your makeup's not done properly, if you've got like a stray hair on one of your clothes, which I always have. But it's best to learn how to read people or just ask questions. Always ask, ask more questions than is necessary because then you won't be wondering about anything. We are not mind readers. 
make sure your clients know that they need to communicate with us they need to tell us exactly what they want because if they don't they're not going to get it always always ask for feedback because what other people think especially if it's good is going to build your confidence hearing from somebody that your work is their most favourite picture of, that, of them that they've ever had in their life you're going to be like yeah I can take really good pictures of people and then you'll be more confident ta-da and you stop saying ta-da because it's not a magic trick but Rachel my angel darling oh oh you're so lovely um, honestly building your confidence is one of the scariest things that you have to do in that kind of industry and my rather extravagant, confident bravado only came this year when I realised I need to be charging more than I am. I struggle to get clients. I only get like three weddings a year. Get people to leave reviews on your Facebook, even if you've just done a free shoot with them. Ask your parents if you can just experiment with some different portrait styles of them. Ask, ask Lauren. Lauren will do it. We know she will. She's a wonderful human, she's an angel just like you and you'll practice and ask your other friends and ask your boyfriends and ask strangers my favourite thing was during uni I practised stopping people on the street and taking pictures of them obviously you're going to get people that say no but again it builds your confidence and it builds your communication skills with people that you don't know so go stand on the street, go shopping and stop people that walk past you that you think are interesting and you want to photograph and just be like, excuse me, would you mind if I took your picture? Explain who you are, if it'd be going anywhere, like on your Facebook page, be used for advertising purposes. Get them to sign a model release form if you're worried. Chances are people are either going to be really, really flattered by it and excited by it or they're just going to say no thank you and move along. Having anxiety and trying to be self-employed is so hard. Trying to get myself to do anything without somebody encouraging me is incredibly difficult. But photography makes me happy. It makes my clients happy. It's worth getting out of bed for. It's worth travelling for. It's worth not getting much sleep over for me. But if it's not worth that for you, then try another field of photography instead. Because obviously if you want to do photography, there are so many options. You can do anything. Everyone wants everything photographing all the time. So just become better than them at it. Because that's all you have to be. And the sixth and final question that Rachel has asked me is what my essential equipment is and what I would recommend to a beginner. Um... I have three cameras, two DSLRs and one point and shoot which is my Sony A5000, that's what I usually use for vlogging, for vlogging. Um, but right now I'm filming on my Canon 600D uh, with a standard kit lens on it because I am filming in the tiniest part of my room and my 50mm zoomed into about here and that, that wasn't great. Um, so yeah, Sony A5000, Canon 600D and Canon 1100D which is here. When I did my first wedding, I rocked up with all of my kit. I had a ring flash, I had an external flash, I had about seven different lenses with me. I have never paid full price for a lens, by the way. Shop on Depop, shop on eBay, shop on Amazon, go into tiny little camera shops that have sales on, look at John Lewis, honestly just troll the internet, you will always be able to find a lens for cheaper than the original retail pricing because sometimes they're really really not worth it and I'm poor, really poor and luckily I've had some friends that had an interest in photography and no longer um, use their cameras so they've given me some of their equipment um, but as I've done more shoots, I've learnt which lenses are appropriate for which situations and for the last wedding I did I took my 600D with my 50mm on it 
I took my 1100D with just a standard kit lens on it and I had my A5000 with the lens that comes with that. I'm not sure if it's interchangeable or not, I think it is. But that's the only one I have for it. And that worked out perfectly for me. I didn't need anything else. You don't need all of these ridiculous lenses that are like this big. I love them and I really want one. But for a wedding, for that wedding, that wouldn't have been an appropriate lens for me to use. And I don't have a spare grand to spend on one anyway. But SD cards. Take all of the ones that you have and buy the biggest sizes that you can. I think most of mine are 32 gigabytes. Let me see. Where are you? You know. Yeah, I use these. Sandisk 32. Always shoot in raw. Always. Please don't ever shoot any other way. Shooting in raw means you've got more control to edit all aspects of this photograph. If you are shooting in low light, especially please use your raw settings because if you don't and you try and lighten the picture, it's going to be so grainy. Nobody's going to want to see that. Shoot in raw. Use big ass SD cards because even if they don't fill up, at least you've not run out of space. The only time I use lighting, like proper lighting, is when I am doing my photo booth, which is this, a backdrop, just made out of cloth, bought from Boise's, cost a couple of quid. You can buy a backdrop stand on eBay for about 20 quid. Um, I use softbox lights for my photo booth because you do need to make sure that it is well lit. I have these humongous lights. I have two of those, again, bought from eBay. Uh, I'll try and find a listing to put in the description box, but they were not expensive by any means, and they come with two stands, two soft boxes, two light bulbs, uh, they just plug in, and they have a switch, Ooh. just plug into the wall, and the light bulbs are like, I was not kidding, this is how big the light bulbs are, but they work perfectly, I've never had a problem, they pack down to, um, like carryable size but yeah I'm trying to think of some wisdom that I can part on um, I'll just recap it with my answers so one I started charging for shoots when I was in college and was sure that I was worth paying for and I'd had enough experience of doing free things to start charging. Number two, how did I start out finding clients? Facebook, people I know, personal recommendations, Gumtree, just online. Flyering, business cards, networking, do all of those things. Three, pricing lists, they are personal to everybody. Pick an hourly rate that you are happy with and make sure your travel time is paid for, make sure your editing time is paid for. Personalise. You are the only person that can tell you, tell other people and yourself how much your time, talent, effort, all of the above is worth. Four, how do I get paid? PayPal, cash, online banking, no checks. Five, any tips on becoming more confident with your work and getting gaining confidence with clients? Practice, practice, practice. You will always improve. You will never get worse if you carry on practicing. Uh, keep shooting for free if you think you're not ready to charge it. Clients, stop strange in the street. No, it's really weird exercise. Don't do it on your own. <laughs> Don't do it in the dark. Don't do it at night. Be safe about it. Um, but yeah. And the last one, essential equipment, more than one camera, just in case. As many SD cards as you can possibly carry. A good camera bag actually is very important. Lighting isn't necessarily important unless you're shooting indoors and there is a place where you can 
get your lighting ready before you'll be taking the pictures because you don't want to be faffing around with lighting during an important moment that you need to be photographing. Uh, lenses, again, the only lens that I absolutely swear by is the 50mm. It gets that perfect crisp focus on the focal point of your photograph and if that's a portrait that's going to be a person's face and then the background will just blend away into this beautiful fuzziness. More than one camera, different lenses on each camera, preferably a 50mm on one and a kit lens on the other because that's what I do, that's what I find works for me. Um, my extra camera is there for little bits of video clips, I'm not great at video, like wedding videos or anything yet but it's there for just in case and for selfies because I got a really cute selfie with the bride and groom from my last wedding. If you're worried that you don't have enough equipment, you do. As long as you've got at least what I just mentioned, you'll be fine. And as long as you know how to use those cameras like they are at the back of your hand. Because that is so important. I cannot express how important it is to know. Like, even if your camera isn't that great and you don't think it's that great, if you can make it do what you want it to, it will work better than someone that has a beautiful, fantastic camera and has no idea how to use it. I hope my wisdom has been wise. Because there is a chance it may not have been... I'm sorry if I have failed you, Rachel. However, if this has actually been helpful, then you are welcome. But if anyone has watched this and has thought of some questions they would like answering in regards to being a student and trying to become a freelance photographer that works for themselves, or just wants some kind of advice in buying equipment, in using equipment, in getting how getting like getting to know your equipment um because literally this camera that i'm filming on right now i can use with my eyes closed and i know exactly what is happening it's weird but that's my job but yeah let me know if there's anything i missed bye